Welcome back to another episode of the Educating the Reckless podcast with your host, Apollo P. And no, no better name yet. Oh, why were you going to do that? I don't know. I, go, I was so into it. <laughs> I just got a new microphone. Let me like test it out a little or something. This guy was going to say my name for me. I know you want to be me, but like. We're back yeah. with another quarantine <laughs> episode. All right. So, uh. How was your your past few days? Um, They were uh, kind of the same thing, Um, except so I decided to venture out to Chick-fil-A. And um, so I went to Yorkdale because I wanted Cheesecake Factory as well. And uh, when I got there, the line was really long. And I was kind of like... What what day did you go? Saturday. What time did you go? Um, seven, six thirty-seven. That's why. So yeah, so the line was kind of long, and then I was waiting, and like nobody social distanced in that line. Like the fucking people behind me were right up my ass, talking like spit droplets going everywhere. I'm like, ew, and like I just kept looking at them, like back the fuck up, and then um, and then yeah, so I waited in the line. It took literally fifty minutes, like five zero. And yeah, I got my food. Cheesecake Factory took ten minutes at max. No, no one's really going over there. Yeah, and I just got a slice of cheesecake, so they just cut it and give it to me. Um, and then yeah, that's pretty much it. And then like, I guess my whole summer starting thing, like I, I don't know, I, I drank on Friday, like outside on a backyard. How did that feel? It was cool, I guess, but it was kind of weird to drink and not go anywhere. I don't know. I'm not the kind of person who likes drinking at home, so like. I like to drink to go somewhere. So it was kind of weird. But yeah, that's basically all I did. Um, I, w- yeah. I, went, I went to Chick-fil-A on Thursday thinking that I was going to grab something to, you know, to eat because I had done an interview around that area. Mm-hmm. And I went to straight there. I walked inside the mall and I seen the line. Like I, was so, I wasn't that close to the line. I seen the line. I see some people walking with Chick-fil-A. I asked them, how long did it take you to get there? He said 60 minutes. I said a whole 60 minutes? Mm-hmm. I'm like, you serious? I was yeah. like, what time is it closing? They were like, you better get in line or figure it out because they might close at 7.30. I think they closed at 8 o'clock that day mm-hmm. or 8.30 that day. I looked at that and I'm like, I'm not even going for it. I just left. Yeah. I, left. I wasn't waiting. I was. It was not- really long, but I got thing. I got two sandwiches. So like I ate them pretty fast. Afterwards. Yes. But. You ate them fast, but you waited like 50 minutes to get them. That's not, yeah, that's not fair. Yeah, but like it was still good. That's not fair. Because so. one time I did it on DoorDash because they're on DoorDash and I did it on DoorDash and it fucking came and it was like cold and the, the sandwich bread was all soggy yeah. and like it, it was like dry, like it didn't taste good. And I was like, what the fuck? So then I just decided to go myself. Yeah, uh, Chick-fil-A is still cool, but I'm, I'm going to go during, like, the wee afternoons where not a lot of people are out. That's one of the best time to go. That's a good time, yeah. Uh, especially on, like, a Tuesday or Wednesday. Go mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I might go tomorrow, to be honest with you. Yeah. Uh, maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> uh, also, I went out with, uh, I'm, I'm with, I went out yesterday. Uh, we went to, uh, I think, Port Union or something with okay. uh, this, this, this girl and her friends. Uh, the girl you're talking to? or like? No, just... no, not at all. Actually, actually not. Oh, okay. It's like we're familiar. I don't. Know, what do you define as talking? Now, now that's confusing. Like, let's like, get. This, let's make this quick. Like, what do you define as talking? Uh, like you're talking every day, and you're really getting to know each other, and it's like on an interest level, not just a friendship level. No. That sounds like genuine conversation with someone. Yeah, but I'm saying like you're interested in pursuing this person or they're interested in pursuing you further and you know that. Like you guys have scheduled dates. No, we haven't we haven't we haven't done no dates. No. First time I met her was with her friends. And I probably to be honest Where did you way 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 first time you met her? Where did you find her? Was this Tinder? No, nah, come on, man. Uh-huh. Tinder's, Tinder's a whole dub. Okay, uh, that's so a traveling that? man's app. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, no, she had hit me up on um, on Instagram after she seen me on her uh, friend's uh, speed dating live, and so from there we just had to oh, you know, okay, okay, and okay. stuff like that. So she real cool people. Like her friends are cool too. Um, this stuff like that. To be honest, it took a, like I got there around like six something, mm-hmm. and I didn't get back home around like twelve something because I was with a, a pack of girls and. Girls, for some reason, take a very long time to be very spontaneous to do something. It's like, 
It took us like three hours to get to Port Union from like, it took like a 30 minute drive. And I was like, what the fuck? Wait, so you picked them all up? I didn't pick them, no one. Oh, okay. You know my body. <laughs> Why did it take you three hours to get there? I was driving with them. They they both all, all our friends had a car. So they're all like packed up in oh. one car. We were pack, I was packed up with her, and then they drove to Wendy's, and then they drove to drop off a package, and then they drove to drop off a dog, and then they drove to pick up some more food, and then that's, they drove so to get So that's what we do. We just like to run errands at the same time and be like, um, what's was not a, She was not efficient. <laughs> but I had fun, to be honest with you. It was cool. I ain't that's no good. All right, so let's get into local topics. Yes. I feel like we should start with Houdini. You, you want to start off with the sad stuff? Yeah, yeah. All right, All right so uh, it's sad to announce that uh, rapper Houdini uh, has unfortunately passed away today due to a, a shooting that happened in downtown Toronto. Uh, if some of you may know, there was reports of a 16-year-old uh, dying uh, where it turned out to be a 21-year-old man uh, go, who goes by the name uh, Houdini. Uh, your thoughts on this, Nina? Uh, yeah, I was going to ask you, like, I'm, I'm disappointed, but I'm not surprised. Um, a lot of people, so when it happened, like, I found out pretty early on that it was him. And a lot of people were saying how, like, first of all, he was, like, posting his pictures that he was back in Toronto, because he'd moved to LA or something. So he yeah. was posting his pictures that he was back in Toronto and stuff. So people picked up on that. Um, and just, like, I don't know. I feel like with Toronto rappers, it's, like, a unfortunately, it's a reoccurring theme that, like, you will die. Like, yeah. not to sound deep or, like, or, like, dark or nothing like that, but, like, it's constantly happening. Like, I don't, I don't know when it's going to stop. I don't think it will stop. And, like, this is how we started the summer off. Mm -hmm. so. uh, it's the same way I feel like uh, we were talking about how Pop Smoke had passed away after, you know, posting his address on, on social media and things like that. It, it kind of seems way say, the same way Houdini has come to those same type of um, just, you know, day-to-day -day social media posting, which is yeah. nothing wrong to post your location, but. There's nothing know, wrong with it, but if you know you have some type of involvement or somebody who's mm -hmm. after you then maybe be a little bit smarter about it i don't know yeah. it's hard though because it's like i don't know it just it's a hard situation yeah it's a very unfortunate situation uh i seen it and uh i remember listening to was it maybe vlad tv or maybe say cheese or something like that they put a report i think we uh we spoke about it maybe a, f a couple podcasts a few podcasts back in the time where most rappers do die in their own city mm -hmm. you know and yeah. so, you know, it's the ones that – it's where, you, where your stomping ground is is usually what takes you in because, you know, it, stuff like that. So I just hope that, uh, you know, justice is served. They find a person who did it. I mean, I feel like it was broad daylight. Uh, they eventually found the people who killed Smoke Dog. So, I mean, they're not really going to get that far. Yeah. It's broad daylight. A lot of people yeah. probably saw something. And a popular – like a very popular yeah. area where there are cameras, CCTV, so. Exactly. And probably the Reddit field are probably going to, you know, talk about the names of the people who did it and stuff like that. So uh, justice to be served. Our condolences go out to Houdini. Yes. He's about the same age as my brother or yeah. close to in range as my brother. So, you know. Yeah, it's unfortunate. We were both – we both had potential opportunities to interview him at – a point. This is very true. This is very true. Yeah. So like, true. like my whole, the whole reason that my interview with him was supposed to be on the fly was because of shit like this. Mm -hmm. So like that didn't even end up happening. Um, and you were supposed to interview him as well. So yeah, I potentially interviewed him as well. I just didn't believe that he was in the city. So I was like, all right, whatever. But, yeah. Uh, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, yeah, neither of us really, I don't know. It's crazy, but yeah. So rest in peace to Houdini. Um, <laughs> But on to something a little more light, but still stupid. Uh, so a lot of people fucked around and went to Trinity Bellwoods Park on Saturday. Or I'm not mad Saturday. at that. I know you're not mad at it because I feel like you would have been there. <laughs> like <laughs> You're one of the only black people or people of color for that matter who would have been there. To be, yes. You know what? I, you know what? I have Trinity Bellwood energy. I just probably wouldn't be there in reality. But yes, I do support everyone that was there. I Okay, so basically cases went back up in Ontario after that. Um, but they also went back down again like a day later. So like I don't really know yeah. the correlation there. But also 
uh, the mayor who has been preaching to us to social distance and blah, 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 fucked around and was there and pictures were there of him not using his mask. Like he just oh, yeah, lowered he, it. He was, he was low. Yeah. He, yeah. Got a, he had a low riding. So like <laughs> when I heard him talking on Monday about like practice social distancing, this and that and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, shut the fuck up. You think anyone's going to listen to you now? No, I'm not listening to him anymore. Yeah. Like, I thought it was crazy, but I think one of the interesting things, sorry, was that someone made a point, basically, and it was, like, there was an article about it in the Toronto Star as well, is because, like, that whole crowd, it literally looked like a concert was happening, like, and that whole crowd was, like, mostly white people, and somebody said, you know, had this been a group of black and brown people, the outcome would have been very different, which I totally agree with. There would have been a lot more tickets, a lot more police there. Everything would have been different about it. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I'm not going to dispute that. Uh, I feel like uh, I had said something uh, when someone, uh, one of my other fellow people of color posted, and I was like, you know what? I feel like uh, this is going to start a race war, right? <laughs> why? That sounds crazy. It's like, Apollo, why would you even say something? Why would you go as far as that? But hear me out. Why I said that is because it seems like when, um, when you give them an inch, when you give humanity and society an inch, it seems like the white people take a mile. And and from that, we see those these situations, not even from Trinity Bellwood, but we saw this creeping up from like downtown, down the way in Florida by the beaches, how everyone was crambling. So mm-hmm. yes, we, we, we had a foreshadow what potentially could happen in Toronto and, it ha- and exactly that happened at Trinity Bellwood Park. And I looked at that and I'm like, yeah, I'm okay with this. But the black people that were so enraged and angered by the fact that there's so many people were out there it made no sense to me. Even um, I posted something in here, just one of a, I'm, I don't know what to call him. I'm not calling him a Toronto influence or anything like that, but he's just a dude that seems to have a, a big following. Mm. Uh, name, Top Boy. Uh, he had posted like a rant and made like a video on his page as well, just talking about how he, he sounded like he was very aggy about the whole situation and, and he felt like this was like a big F you to the essential workers of all the hard work they're doing. You're, you're able to spread the cases and stuff like that. And I mean, he, he, this is this is Western society. You're fair to say whatever you want. I don't really care. But I look. I was like, we're a social being. Like this is. I felt like this was gonna happen eventually. Like people would get fed up with just being inside, and and come out. Yeah, and but we're social beings. Yeah, but they also like purposely have been easing the rules. Well, maybe not purposely, but they've been easing the rules towards this nicer weather so that we could have the privilege of seeing our friends and stuff and like like this guy said like the point is like stay in your backyard like I've hung out like with friends and hung out in our backyards like not you know out in public with a larger gathering of people where it's more people that I have no idea where they've been and who they've been in contact with you know Mm -hmm. so I feel like to keep it in a confined space would be better but I don't know. That, that's ideal. That's ideal. But I'm. A, is it going to happen? Not really. It's I don't ideal. know. I heard the virus can't survive in the summer. So, like, hopefully this is just done. Man, viruses can survive wherever. But in, like, the heat. I heard that their viruses don't survive in the heat. Viruses can survive wherever. I'm, I'm this is, it. honestly, this is just never ending. We're all just going to yeah. die. I just give up. Oh, that's kind of dark. But, I've well, always. Check, <laughs> go on, go. Check, check this out. Check this out, right? I met this when I was, you know, outside yesterday, uh, and we went to. They went to go pick up some Wendy's. Her Jamaica, her Jamaican um, godmother said, "Corona is not for everybody." <laughs> and what I took from that is that <laughs> if you're meant to get it, you're meant to get it. <laughs> that's, what, <laughs> that, that's what I took from it. That's what I think about life and death. Is that exactly. Death? Yeah. yeah, if you're meant to, if you're meant to go, you're, you're meant to go. You know. Yeah, what I mean? but it's just like ugh, I don't know. Make, make I'm sure just you, over it. Make sure when I'm in the casket, have me in some you know regular jeans and a t-shirt with some Air Air Jordan ones. All That's right, it. Relax, relax. Mm-hmm. I just think I'm over it because the weather has been getting nicer, so it's harder to like. I want to go to the beach and tan so fucking badly right now. Yeah. Like I just I don't know. I think that's why I'm just so like. Why you got? Why do you have to? Someone talking about chilling in the backyard. Why can't you tan in your backyard? I wanted to, but like, I'm trying to be like, because this is the problem. Like I have so many people in and out of my house all day, like, and then my grandparents and it's just like, 
my grandpa's always going in and out of the backyard to garden. Like, I'm going to be there just laying out tanning. Like, I don't Nothing know. Nothing wrong with that. We've seen that in Clueless. We've seen that in all type of, like, Beverly Hill type of movies. Okay, but, like, I'm not white. You're not, but you're I'm suburban. brown. Yeah. Right, so, is, is, are they going to take issue with that? <laughs> no, my grandpa won't take an issue. It's just awkward. Like, and my tattoos and stuff. Like, it's just awkward. My tattoos, oh. yeah. I'll, I'll get in shit for that. My parents, my mom knows about my tattoos. My dad knows about them, but, like, so annoying. when the 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 primarial parents be more of a, a risk factor rather than the grandparents? You would think so. My mom just told me to go out and do it. But like I don't want to tend my backyard with no pool either. Like what am I gonna do? Lie on the fucking cement? Yes. No. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> all right. I tried to help. You know, Toronto's in shambles. I'm trying to find a, a beach where not a lot of people are gonna be going so I can, you know social distance and get my or if somebody has a pool i my cousin has a pool but i just haven't gone over drake drake has been posting videos at his pool like yeah he has a fucking uh grotto or grout or <laughs> drought or whatever that thing is called he has a whole moat in front of his house i'm just waiting for him to have a pool party and invite me and i'll go i asked my boyfriend today i said would you be mad if i went <laughs> what that man's <laughs> he said yes and i said why <laughs> As you should. I said, why? I wouldn't do nothing. He's like, if Drake wanted to fuck you, you wouldn't do nothing. I'm like, oh, shit. I said, I, said, I said, you, I said, you stutter? I said, my loyalty is unmatched. I would never. And then I waited two minutes. I was like, actually, I'm mm. like, and then he's like, exactly. I was like, okay, but what if he just invited me? Like, what if it was like his New Year's party and I just got to go because like, you know, I interviewed his friend, you know? So, like, what if I was invited through that? And it was literally just to go, not for nothing, like, not not for nothing sexual. And he's like, I'd still be in my feelings. I was like, exactly, as he should. Just let me as live. Make him your plus one. <laughs> <laughs> Are you stupid? I won't be allowed in. <laughs> Make him your plus one. All right. Okay. I'm doing a terrible job with this timer thing, because I never, I haven't still yet to... Oh, you didn't lap. start it? Oh, okay. No, I, I started it. I just haven't done the lap. So, okay, that's all right, let's get into local news. You mean pop culture. You said local. All right, so pop culture news. So let's talk about this white woman. All right, can you break it down for me, Nina? Yeah, real quick. So Lana Del Rey, uh, yeah. this is the start. Let's, she, let's she's make white. This... She's not Hispanic, right? Yeah, she's just white. This is okay. the start of the the influx of, of racial issues we've been having with artists this week. So mm -hmm. Lana Del Rey, she sings that song, Summertime Sadness. If any of you guys know, that's like the only one I know. Um, but basically she made a post and she was calling out, you know, like saying how like she basically feels singled out and that like her music she's being attacked for because it, it she's people are telling her it glamorizes abuse and stuff. When mm -hmm. she's like people like Nicki Minaj, Cardi B, Ariana Grande, um, Doja Cat and other people she named as well uh, like they don't face that issue and she was saying like how this is um, a problem with the culture and girls who look like her um, like don't like get this um, they get this they have this problem basically is what she's yeah. saying um a lot of people took problem in what she said because they felt it was a race thing when she said the whole look like her thing. Mm -hmm. um, and she also mentioned, you know, I'm not a feminist, but what did she say? It's right here. It says, uh, sorry, it's like so long. Um, Yo, I, I was reading that shit and I was like, did this, I don't want to call her a bitch. Did this, did this woman write that on a fucking typewriter, scan it? And <laughs> <laughs> that fits her theme, you know, but basically somewhere in here. Yeah. Let's, let's let this be clear. I'm not a feminist, but there has to be a place in feminism for women who look and act like me, the kind of woman who says no, but men hear yes. And yeah. Whoa, like, where's she taking? She, she took, you know, she took that pose dark, man. Yeah. I don't know. She just, she basically just was, was mad that everyone else had number one song about being sexy with no clothes, fucking and cheating, but she was mm -hmm. getting, uh, crucified or saying that she was glamorizing abuse that's pretty much her issue um my whole thing was reading this post i'm like she so she's named beyonce kalani ariana grande camila cabello doji cat cardi b and Nicki minaj you didn't name as, city girls for some reason i don't know why <laughs> those girls be the epitome of ratchet man <laughs> she but she named these people saying that they make songs about this stuff without getting back or with becoming number one and insinuating that they're not getting backlash but like mm -hmm. they do 
mm-hmm. they all have gotten backlash for yeah. literally when we talk about Nicki Minaj and stuff people constantly say how Nicki Minaj like she's not the best rapper but like a lot of it is because of her sex appeal you know what i mean like people whoa 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 Nicki minaj got bars no like she's not she's not a bad rapper but sorry what i'm trying to say is like you know how people will say like you know if a girl's a really good rapper because like if they're fully clothed and they made it that far like missy elliott for example like that's kind of what i'm that's what i'm trying to say sorry okay am i wrong but that's what i'm trying to say but like yeah like all those artists, Cardi B has faced backlash for all the shit she talks about. Yeah, I mean, I think Cardi B faces more backla- backslash for her behavior on social media than what she puts in records. Let's just keep it. Yeah. Keep so that right. So mm-hmm. I see where I I read the post. I see where she was trying to go. She was saying, "Hey, m- my genre or my style or my um, what's it? My top my topical ideas for music." has been so sensationalized by these artists and went number one and, and became, I guess, a pop cultural song and, and recognition. But I, when I was doing that coming up, because usually when you're the first to do something or I guess the more polarizing person to do something, you would face a lot of hate. And it's, it's supposed to happen. Uh, when, you're, when, you're, when you're a genius, they always call you an idiot or a crazy or something like that. And when you're first to do something, I always say, yo, it's whack. What the fuck are you doing? Mm-hmm. Right? So... She started off something. She start. She got the wheel rolling. These guys just took up the mantle and you know slam dunked it as they should. But now she she didn't have to say it. But as an artist, you really want credit, and we live in a world in a society where people want credit even for everything. You see on TikTok even like people be like people take my shit and they go on a whole like little TikTok rant about it. So yeah, want credit. I can understand that. I can respect that. Well, so she apologized. Well, I, not I really apologized. That. She kind of, ex- she didn't, well, she didn't really apologize. She just said, like, she kind of explained where she's coming from. And she's like, I'm but not she, a racist did, person. Yeah. yeah, but she's like, I'm not a racist person. I think that's what she wanted to clear up because people were saying, like, why'd you name only black girls? But that's not true. Camila Cabello's Hispanic, Kalani's Hispanic, Ariana Grande's Italian. So, yeah. So the thing is, so like the thing is she wants to keep the narrative the way that she kept her narrative but the thing is i think she was talking too much i feel like when you like there's a saying you don't want to talk to the 85 percent because the 85 percent will never understand you right yeah you want to talk to you you put out something you made sure i read it i was like it, the shit was fucking annoying to read but like i read it i'm like all right it's I, even worse to listen to yeah Oh, yo, man. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's like fucking Her and Doja. <laughs> her and Doja. Fuck, I don't ever want to hear him talk again. I don't want to hear him ever talk longer than a fucking minute clip on Instagram again. Yeah. Like, so, I don't know. I kind of feel like... I do personally feel like it was a little bit of a reach to call Lana racist for this. I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, like, I don't think... And I do believe in her when she's saying, like, that wasn't her intention. It was never to be racist. I get it. She said the whole girls that look like me thing, but she explained in her whole video that, like, she meant she meant something it wasn't really about the way she looks it was just more so about that whole thing with the type of women who when they say no men hear yes like that is kind of what it was i don't know how that made sense but i don't think she was being racist like she named three artists who weren't black so like people were saying it was strictly a black and white thing people rate we live in a very racial time right now <laughs> yeah you, you name so, you name one black person from if white person names one black person that shit racist and i i just feel it in my bones <laughs> yeah so i don't know that's just what i thought and uh yeah oh, i also man. laughed at the fact that in the post she said she was uh not a feminist but she's fighting for a woman in the whole like the whole purpose of it is to fight for women which i do the sad thing about it is I do, I do this myself, and a lot of people do it themselves. They talk themselves into a, into a hole. Like, mm-hmm. sometimes it's just better off to just say, like, you know what, fuck it, I said what I said. And then wh- whoever wants to comment, you might want to resp- reply to some of the comments in the blogs, we'll pick it up and, and post. But as long as you said what you said initially and it, it, it's, it reads well, then the people who want to interpret that any type of way, they just can. But, yeah. Yeah, yeah but, I hear you. But people tend to talk to and, and sometimes people want to want people to like them and yeah. want to not be negativity so that's why they can talk and talk and talk and, and i could and that too that's a human response yeah well, right. so oh. that was the start of the little race racial thing that we had yeah. going on this week and then let's get into let's get into this other one 
So Doja Cat was exposed as a self-hating wannabe KKK, busting it open for the white man while bashing on herself. I came up with that myself. I thought it was good. Uh, <laughs> so basically, there was a whole Twitter thread exposing Doja for being in these tiny chat rooms with incel like white men like like racist white men who hate women uh alt right sorry alt right incel men that's what i meant to say yep. um they're not med tau men yeah 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 and so basically she like she was in those chats and there was this clip that resurfaced of her kind of what seemed like her taking part in race play um mm. and she like told the guy like suck my dick and word with, with a hard r um and then it does sound on brand for her though i, I know she's fucking <laughs> weird so then then uh the thread continued on basically talking about how um i don't know just how like problematic she's been she's like been kind of hating herself as being half black like she hasn't mm -hmm. really liked that part of herself she's talked about how she uses these slurs in tiny chat rooms in a paper magazine interview um and things of that nature. Um, she apologized, obviously. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't know who she apologizing to. Me neither. That's what. That's what. The, and so white people are happy that she did this, and she doesn't care about the black people. So yeah. who is she saying sorry to? I don't know. But um, so she went on her apology, and she it was an Instagram story she posted initially, just apologizing. But then she took to Instagram Live and basically said, "Yeah, my team made me write that." But she was just like, "I don't take part in race play," and she was saying that the guy who she was talking to does. So then isn't that yeah. you taking part in it? The, and, the guy she's talking to is, is white, right? Yeah. Like, the guy who and, looked like he shot Jimmy, right? Yeah. And then, <laughs> and then she said, so then in the thread, Twitter thread exposing her, there was also a resurfaced clip of a song called Didn't Do Nothing mm. from 2015. I wasn't familiar with the term. I had to Google it. Um, and I found out, yeah, there's this, this yeah. Uh, use, term used in slavery for basically when like a black person you see a black person doing something they're like oh i didn't do nothing so yeah. they call them or like, didn't the, do nothing you, or you could bring it up you can modernize it or when like you know when someone uh when someone's arrested black people are like he didn't do nothing yeah you know? so uh she made a song and the song was a lot of people interpreted it as um mocking police brutality and specifically mm. referring to this whole sandra bland uh incident ah, I remember that. um yeah i didn't listen to the whole song i listened to the clips of it and she was going on to say how oh i was using the song to take back the term but it is the worst song possible and i did it in the wrong way and blah 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 mm. um i'm gonna get into my thoughts on that like a little later when i ask you kind of what yeah. you think about so, it but so that the whole the whole just exposing of what type of nature she is a lot of people well not to say a lot but i have one i'm one of the elk that looked at it and i was like i feel like this is on brand i'm not well, really surprised yeah and she already had incidents previously like in 2015 as well she faced backlash for like homophobic slurs because she mm. tweeted at tally the creator and earl sweatshirt and called them f-words yeah so yeah, like, I mean, Tyler the Creator was using was the, one of the guys that was really pushing the F word forward back in like early 2011. So, <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, you know, I I feel like that's on like you know his fan base probably says that. Uh, but uh, when I look, I look at this. So what? I want to take this road, right? So when I looked at all of this, right, I seen Doja make an apology, and I see I see the explosion of Doja, and I'm looking at this like you know what. Why are we getting back at her? I feel like the the worst thing, the worst thing that anyone could, the worst thing that can happen to anyone is looking in the mirror and being disgusted with what, what you see in front of you, right? Mm -hmm. So I feel like she's already trapped inside uh, her own worst punishment. We yeah. can't do nothing worse than she, what she's already done to herself. If she's looking inside the mirror and she looks at herself as just a, a dirty Negro that feels like someone just does, isn't, isn't uh, good enough. Mm -hmm. You know, if she looks at herself and go like, just tease that. So she's part South African. She looks at that and she sees the Zulu in her. And it's like, I don't know if she's Zulu exactly, but uh, she, she, if she looks in that, she sees a Zulu in her and it just, it's just not appealing. And then she looks at her mom and it's like, I wish I could be look like my mom. And she ends up getting a white boyfriend. So her babies can carry on a more of a wider legacy, probably uh, a more manageable hair. Mm hmm. Because that was one of her things. She hated her. She, yeah. There's a video of her talking about how she hates her hair. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, and like the curl, I think it's called the curl style. I'm not sure. Yeah, I think called. it was 4C or something like that. Yeah. And she was like talking about how she hates combing it and this and that yeah. and, and stuff, which is a common thing. Like uh-huh. black girls do have frustration with their hair. Yeah. That's not an uncommon thing we've heard, but it's not yeah. like, like that's my whole thing is like, when do we get to a point where it's like, do we cancel? Because a lot of people are just like, fuck it, she's canceled. But at what point do we decide maybe it's time to actually educate this person and get yeah. them out of this self-hatred that they have against themselves? Because it is sad. It's it is hate. sad it's when you hate. see people like that who literally hate half of themselves because society has made you think that that half of yourself is ugly, is disgusting, is lazy, is whatever, whatever else she played on, you know? Like, yeah. it is sad. And it's like, at what point do we decide that? their antics are horrible enough towards themselves that we realize it's a deeper issue that they need help with or do we just let them continue on with this mindset that they have towards themselves and continue to spread it and therefore like continue to empower these alt-right incel people yeah no point the counselor because what i mean there's like i like i believe there's plenty plenty of black people out there that are maybe not even mixed race. It might be like full black and just are fully disgusted with themselves, right? Mm -hmm. They're like, I mean, someone, we should just show her that black is beautiful type of thing. Or for those who want to show her. That's what I'm saying. Like, I feel like, yeah, sorry, continue. For those who want to show her that black is beautiful, why don't we just show her that light? Just show her black is beautiful and let her accept that, you know? Maybe we might see a different doja when she learns to accept that. Or maybe it might be a deep systemic problem where it's like, she mixes the fact with her, I don't know if her dad's in her life, maybe her dad. Her dad's and, an actor, a South African actor and producer, actually. I Googled in her him. life? In her I life. don't know if he's in her life, but like his name was in an article and I Googled it and he's an actor and producer. So maybe something tied in the, something like that. Hey, Amen. I don't know, but it just, yeah, Tough. I I thought about that. And then with the whole didn't do nothing song, um, I think if somebody like Jay-Z or Lil Wayne made a song like that the contents would be completely different and yes the streets would play the song the reason i say that is because a while ago jay-z once said something i think it was on an interview with oprah about Mm -hmm. the black community taking back the n-word for themselves um you know and and taking back and that ownership and the meaning and whatever of it and and reworking it for themselves as a black community um the reason this whole thing with doja is problematic is because everything she says in the song she's saying she was trying to take back the term but there was literally nothing positive about what she said about the term it wasn't in no like lying (laughs) yeah it wasn't in no like good good demeanor like it was all negative it was all just playing to the white man's definition of the term overall Mm. is literally everything she said so like she's honestly just i don't know i don't believe in her apology i i when someone has a mindset like this it takes a very long time to get out of that especially if you were in those chat rooms six days before all this information came out, you're not sorry for what you yeah. did. You still believe in yeah. all of this stuff. So yeah. I just think like, I don't know, at what point do you personally decide to cancel artists? Because we've seen everyone saying they're canceling her. Like, at what point do you decide? Like, we, we know character culture is more so just a hot topic. This shit don't really, it's, it's not really mobilized. You know, it's not like, you know, Occupy All Streets. It's just not, like, cancel concert is not one of those. It's kind of like, you know, we drum up a little buzz on the internet, or they drum up a little buzz on the internet, uh, get things stirring in a news cycle, and then, you know, two weeks later, whatever. Okay. I, she did, did she really do anything necessarily bad, or did she really just come out to say, she really, she doesn't, she hates herself. What, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cancel you for hating yourself? That, you are, you've already done more, you, you already done more to yourself than I can do to you. Mm-hmm. You know, I think it's more so just uh, people taking offense to it. I think the people who are offended by it and who yeah. don't see it as this whole self-hatred thing are obviously like, fuck it, I'm canceling her. Yeah. But then, you know, people like maybe like us who are just like, this bitch mm. needs fucking help. I never listened to her music anyway, so. I mean, you just listen to whatever was on the radio, to be honest, but, or whatever was on TikTok. They were not, all on TikTok. I'm not going front lane and say, yo, we should cancel her. Get her the fuck out of here. Yeah. I, never, I never put no money in her pocket anyways. Yeah, she was always a weirdo, but yeah, I don't know. I genuinely just think she needs to be sat down and told, like, yeah. and she just needs the whole reworking of that mindset. Wherever she grew up and stuff, it wasn't. Because yeah. everyone struggles with that, but it's just like, you. it's, I don't know, it's how you move Low forward. Low self-esteem, but. I think. 
Yeah. Um, in other news, uh, just quickly on Instagram Live over the weekend, uh, there was a Drake song that was being played on Night Owl Sound. Drake was there. I think it was 40 who was playing it. Um, and it was an old song, and it basically talks about Kylie Jenner being his side piece. Um, the lyric says, like, Kylie Jenner is my side piece or some shit like that. Um, do you think this was ever actually true? And that, cause he apologized the next morning. He literally apologized like a couple hours later in the morning saying he doesn't want any of his friends to wake up mad. Um, cause he's friends with the Kardashians yeah. and like, I don't know. Do you think it was true? Like, cause when has he ever really apologized for any kind of lyrics before? Uh, I don't think he has ever, I uh, didn't he apologize for his, um, calling his baby moms a, uh, I don't think he apologized. A fluke? I don't think he apologized for that. Yeah. Oh, he didn't so. apologize for that. I don't, I don't recall. Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't recall, though. All right. Yeah. So it might have been Cap. <laughs> well, that's, that's what I'm... No, I think... Like, I don't know. Like, I just think... I don't know. And because the only time I remember him apologizing was for the whole blackface scandal. Like, that's the only time I remember. Yeah. But I feel like if he's saying sorry... I feel like if he's saying sorry, it's true. Not that it's cap. I think no. I don't think it's true. I think it's more so he knows how this uh this industry is, this society is. For him saying that, uh, people will start to dig and, and unbridge and, and look for a reason to believe that lyric as if it's actually reality. And I think Drake knows that he's actually knows these people personally, and he doesn't want Kanye to come on his head. Because so. it's been a rumor before that him and Kylie were like fucking around. Bro, it's always been a reoccurring rumor. I don't know why, but I don't know. I, don't know. I feel like if you apologize, I feel like it could be true, to be honest with you. Why Kylie? I don't know. Everybody wanted Kylie after she like got everything done. Oh, I think she turned 18. Yeah. She after was she hot. turned 18 and got the lip injections and the face fillers. and She was like the hottest thing on the market. Yeah. Um, and then, so Ludacris, uh, addressed an R. Kelly. So he had his versus battle with Nelly. Yeah. Um, and there was a lyric in one of the songs he played, uh, was I love R. Kelly, but not around my daughter, something along those lines. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people were like, what the fuck? We should cancel, <laughs> cancel Luda for this lyric and blah, blah, blah. And everyone's like, what the fuck? Why would you say that? You run kid organizations and all this stuff. I don't, I don't know. Like, mean? do you think it's offensive? Like, do you think? Hey, la last time I checked, hey, people do a background check on you if you do any weird, weird or shit, right? Mm -hmm. You liking someone that may or may have not, well, he thought not in, a, uh, not guilty, may not pee on little girls and do a whole bunch of sexual deviant things. Just because you like their music doesn't necessarily doesn't make you uh, <laughs> unrequired to be a father or run. Uh, or run children organizations, or just be an overall decent human being. It and, doesn't it doesn't strip you from any of those type of things. And I don't think what he said was like, "I love R. Kelly, but not around my daughters." Like, it's. I don't think he's saying like I support him. I genuinely took it as him saying he likes R. Kelly as an artist. He likes what he's done for the culture, which is literally what he ended up explaining on a radio interview with Tigger, and he explained that. But then my whole thing was. If people are overreacting this much about him bringing up R. Kelly's name, how do we raise awareness for the next generation of kids who are maybe younger than us, like my little sisters, for example, who didn't grow up listening to R. Kelly? How do we raise awareness to them about the amount of wrong this person did while in the spotlight with other people blatantly, like, like oh, covering their eyes? Gonna, that's where you're going to take it. I thought you were going to take it in the fact of where, we, where do we not blur the line between taking you know, musical lyricism and, and, oh, and no, wordplay, no, no. not into a real thing. Sometimes no, shit but, just sounds right. Yeah, well, that too. But like, yeah, I don't know. I just feel like it, it, it causes an issue in terms of, yeah, if we try to erase, like, I get it. We don't want to listen to R. Kelly. I understand he's canceled, but that doesn't mean you can't fucking mention his name. I was name listening to R&B Thug the other day by R. <laughs> Kelly. <laughs> but then it's just like, how do you tell someone, like, if someone brings up the name R. Kelly, how, how do we remind these kids that, like, yeah, artists in the spotlight can still be child pedophiles like this is true. don't go and hang out with every single r&b singer who says they're gonna give you a record deal because he might be a pedophile like that's kind of what i was thinking of so this is true yeah i don't know that's just hey, man. Our college audio the fuck out of here man his history his legacy is written <laughs> uh all right so you seen the picture of aisha curry yes i did she looks very good look good right she really got good. her she got her body together <laughs>
Yeah, you know, respect that. Uh, so, uh, so the internet, as petty as it is, you know, they looked at her those pictures and were like, "Wow, she got her skin out." You know, after telling our IG models that she wouldn't do anything like that, being modest and things like that. And w- w- what do you think about that? Like, do you think that she's you can't you can't do that? You, you think that she's a hypocrite? I don't think she's a hypocrite because the tweet said something about like trashy clothing. I reread it today, like the old tweet. It was about trashy clothing. Mm -hmm. And bikini pics are literally just that. Like she wasn't, her bikini pic, it's, it wasn't posed up all nasty. It wasn't like angled. So like her ass looked fatter or anything Mm -hmm. to be sexual. It was literally a picture of her standing up straight. And not turn no type of way not pushing your boobs up literally nothing like it was just a plain picture and she just like showed off her weight loss which i think was amazing yeah. um and yeah i don't think it was hypocritical because yeah she she won't wear trashy clothing like my example that i use is like you see people go to the club and like those mesh see-through outfits all together like that's trashy i mean mind you i've done it once before yeah. but never again because i was so uncomfortable but <laughs> like you see people do that and yeah that is trashy like that's how i felt that night i wore something like that mm-hmm. but and i think that's what she was referring to because she said in the tweet trashy clothing she'd rather be classy than trashy so that's what I took. Hey, man. I looked at that. I was like, you know what? I'm glad to see you going. Uh, people are going to tear you up regardless because people got a lot of time and hate in their hearts. So, you know. Yes. I mean, is it fair? Ain't nothing fair in this world, baby. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so here's an update to the beef with the Webby. Uh, he basically said a whole lot of nothing, but I kind of summed it up for everyone that might be just tuning in on this whole Webby thing. I summed it up by saying it just seems like this whole confrontation or you know, friction between both of them is based on pride slash ego. Uh, you know, that's what it is. Yeah, for Someone, sure. Some, someone's got their pride hurt, their egos, you know, misstroke, and they feel that's that's what causes tension. Well, yeah. I, I want to ask you a quick question. Has pride or ego ever broken up a friendship of yours? I don't think pride or ego, no. It's right. never been an issue of pride or ego. So how do you think you solve like a, something like this, like when pride and ego kind of clash and um, friendship the rift? I think you address it. I'm mm-hmm. I'm I'm a very like open communication person, mm-hmm. and I I always address all issues I have with people like flat out because nobody can read your mind. Mm-hmm. So I honestly think it comes to addressing it, but when you have pride or an ego, that gets a little difficult because you just want the other person right. to expect you expect them to know that they did wrong. Exactly. So, so you, they don't. I don't know. It's kind of so hard. It, so it takes like a third party to come in and kind of put that together. Which is like stupid because then how do you go to the third party with it? Honestly, I feel like having an ego and like that much ego and that much pride is just bad. Yeah. That's it. Hey, hey man. A lot of people like that. Uh, I was going to talk about this Trump shirt, but we're running out of time. Yeah. Uh, so here. So you see the little quick little snippet of Gunna doing the whip it and dip? No, I didn't see that. So there's... so. Gunna came on IG Live real quick. He came in, did like an inhale of uh, nox- nitrous oxide, okay. which is the same type of gas that we put in balloons and stuff like that. Or I thought it was helium. Yeah. You know? I don't know. Uh, it's a nitrous oxide. So he did like, and it, you know, did that. I didn't know what it was. It looked like a water bottle to me. I was like, oh, why are you drinking a water bottle and leaving? But it was actually an <laughs> aerosol type of, <laughs> it was actually an aerosol type of can. And he was able to inhale. So the effects of it, uh, it, when inhaled nitrous oxide, it causes dizziness, pain relief, a floating sensation. It's commonly used uh, for during surgery, I guess, to numb things up. Uh, and then I put like a, a link to, mm-hmm. I don't know why I'm telling the people that. I definitely just going to ask you. <laughs> <laughs> but so when I looked into it, I seen that uh, with the, the guy from Jackass, he was, uh, he was really doing that stuff a, a lot. And uh, a, news blog, a news blog, DJ Blues, who was like, he took a stand and was like, yo, we're not going to accept this type of behavior. I mean, from what it looks like, it says you can get addicted to it, but it's like, not really. You can. I don't feel like if it's from the balloons, I don't think it's like a... Yeah. People do that balloon shit all the time. But that's helium. I think it's... I don't know if... The, I don't if know it's about. different, if it yeah. actually is like a serious drug, like, because... I'm kind of thinking of like when I had knee surgery like I I, they gave me morphine and honestly I fucking love that shit like that's probably so bad to say but it was like 
amazing like how I felt on it and I had knee surgery twice so like I got it both times and it was fucking amazing yeah. if it's something like that and like makes you feel like that then like yeah that's we can't support yeah. that I mean, to be honest, we can't support Whip It. <laughs> we, we, sh- we shouldn't support a lot of shit, but we do. <laughs> All right, so here's some quick hip-hop uh, news facts that I want to just throw out there. So rapper Coyle Ray and Rico Nasty got into an argument over Twitter, I believe over a makeup artist or some hairstylist. That shit was boo-boo. Uh, <laughs> Fabio Foreign uh, posted a picture of him and his girlfriend, like a before and after picture of uh, her being pregnant and them allegedly living in a shelter and him wearing a fair gamo belt and some really expensive jeans on. Ball main jeans. Ball main jeans. And the world was like, what the fuck? Yo, yeah. Living in a like, shelter, obviously. Yeah. Priorities were fucked up. Exactly. And then now he's still expensive clothes but with the jewelry, but like a better lifestyle. People weren't that impressed about to come up. Because yeah. <laughs> the shit kind of looked kind of different. Um, I want to so you want I want to give a congratulations to Quavo. Yay! He had graduated high school at the age of twenty nine. Uh, that is a beautiful thing. Education waits for no man. <laughs> oh, that doesn't make sense. I would think exactly. you could go, you could go back to education at any time you want, sir or ma'am, if you're listening <laughs> to this. Don't continue. Uh, Carolina rapper. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember this guy, but he's a guy that got into a fight with the baby last year. He goes by the name Cam Coldheart. Uh, he got knocked outside of a jewelry store or some type of expensive store in in Carolina after, you know, teasing and trolling the baby for so long. He said that whole fight was uh, fraudulent and the baby paid him, you know, to gain some clout. I think that's a lie. The baby was already popping. Yes, exactly. Uh, Azalea Banks said that she slept with Dave Chappelle and she could <laughs> ruin the marriage if she, you know, if she really wanted to. Uh, that's a dusty trick. I think that was uh, enough to ruin the marriage, so. Uh, exactly. Uh... I really want to talk about this thought. Uh, yeah. It, uh, how much time do we have left? You got about less than 15. Okay. So do you want to talk about the hot take that you put in last week? You want to talk about hot take? You want to or go? Let's do, let's do the, the murder, the police brutality murder case. Okay. And the, um, the hot take. All right, then. Cool. So, uh, so how do I say this? We have another can't breathe murder in America. Well, we live in Canada, but it still, you know, trickles over here. Mm-hmm. The fact that we're seeing everything. So this man, he goes by the name, or he he went. His name was George uh, Floyd. He was forty six year old. Uh, and there's a, just a gruesome video out there. I never saw the whole video. I saw a lot of what the the news were putting out there as it was reported about it. And so what I just saw was a man screaming in agony, talking about, I can't breathe, I can't breathe. And the cop just having his knee just stuck on that man's neck with such firm and pressure. And they said about in the four to five minute mark, the man's body uh, stopped moving. Mm -hmm. And uh, I looked at that and I was like, we have another murder like this? I can't breathe? Like, what's going on here? He was already handcuffed. Why why do you need to apply extra pressure to this man? just for uh for that thing to go down Mm -hmm. and you know the internet reacted everyone you know up in arms again as they should be and they're like cops are not here to serve or protect anymore uh and on top of that uh the man the man lost his life to honestly to senseless police brutality and Mm -hmm. it really makes no sense yeah i didn't um i saw clips of the video and screenshots of the cop with his neck on him but i could not watch that video the same way i couldn't watch the ahmaud arbery video yeah um but yeah it's really fucked up but i mean a lot a lot of people up in arms uh yeah it's similar to air garner we're gonna they're gonna compare this exactly to air garner that's Mm -hmm. what's gonna happen and we're gonna and people are gonna dip back into the whole air garner case and go like why did this happen but you know what i feel like this uh this this situation, this incident is going to be, is not going to necessarily parallel Eric Garner. This is just my prediction. I feel like we've seen where this went down, where we see where the courts went wrong with Eric Garner case and the fact that the cop got off. Mm-hmm. But these four cops had already been, uh, have been fired, uh, which is unprecedented, apparently. And uh, they're going to look into the reports. And by no reports means there's any necessary force to kill a man with having your knee on him. He had, yeah. he did nothing. Right. Yeah. So it looks like I feel like these these cops will be charged and go to court and things like that. Are they going to be thrown at the books? I don't Who know, knows? but they yeah. will be charged and I feel like they will be serving some time. Right. I hope so. I really do hope so. Yeah. I, I'm and, a little less hopeful, to be honest with you, but 
I do hope so. And also, uh, I just want to put this out there quick. Uh, Karen in the park called the police on the black man for telling her. Yo, she was choking the fuck out of that dog, though. Uh, but, the dog uh, got sur- had to get surrendered, apparently. She had to yeah, the dog. Her, her, her whole life went to shambles because you know why? <laughs> yeah. With her true color shown. Yeah. No, I seen her apology on the CNN, and it was like, oh, I was just scared, and I meant no offense to the black people. No, you, you hate black people. It's all right. Yeah. It's all right. The, she got fired from her job, as she should. Mm-hmm. And her dog got surrendered, I, as, as it should. Mm-hmm. And now her life is in shambles, as yep. it should. All you know, in a twelve-hour time span. We exactly. love to see it. <laughs> I looked at that. And I was like, "Damn, she's choking the hell out of that dog. She's being unnecessarily aggressive to this black man." You know what I mean? Like, yeah, oh, man, get no, the fuck okay. out of here. She racist as hell, man. Get the fuck out of here. Keep All watch. right, so uh, ten minutes left. Do okay. Do you want to do this right now, or you want to just save it and do some do the rest of the other topics? I mean, well, the rest of the other topics is like you know. I think we kind of whipped through a lot of them, to be honest. We don't even really have like Alexis Guy. Okay, so or the hairstylist that gave COVID nineteen to a whole bunch of people, which it's I respect that. I'm not respect it, but you know I understand. Okay, that. let's just do the hot take then. Um, I said no, get the hell people. Oh, all right. So here's a here's a hot take. We got about. I'm gonna see if we could do this in about eight minutes. This is Apollo's hot take. Hot. I we gotta come up with a better thing because it's not really a hot talk, but it's just it's so, something that my friend and I were talking about over the phone, right? So after this conversation, me and my homie spoke about relationships. Uh, we started talking about you know meeting girls and certain girls being in like long term relationships, like five to eight years, maybe you know decades, and ultimately breaking up with their significant other, right? Him and I we laughed about it, uh, and the reason why we laughed about it is because I I made I made. Re- I made this funny joke. I was like, if you believe in marriage, right? If marriage is a, a, a point that you're trying to reach with your significant other and you're with them for five to eight plus years and you break up, you must consider that time with that person wasted. It, it, it has to be wasted. Because if you, if you think, if, you, if that's a point to reach and you're with someone for five to eight years, yeah, yeah. I that's that was wasted wasted time and I laughed I laughed so hard because <laughs> I was like yo there's something wrong with you and there's something wrong with the dude or the dude probably saw no value in you and or something because I can respect a failed marriage what I can't respect is someone being in a relationship for that long and the motherfucker didn't get down on one knee and propose to you what's wrong with you man there's something wrong with you. I think a failed marriage is worse, actually, because you financially went into something, obviously knowing that there were certain red flags at some point that you were going to get divorced mm-hmm. because something was going to go wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, because I, I do think you won't marry someone if you if you have red flags, like you you know that's going to end up in a divorce later on. If it's red flags, you can't fix. So, but so I'm, hold, hold, yeah. I, I, keep, hold that thought. Hold that thought. We. Are, we're old enough and we know a lot as we get older mm-hmm. when the red flags appear. I, I believe red flags start to pop up around right after the honeymoon phase or maybe in the honeymoon phase itself. And we're able to identify those certain things. So we know that we're going to be with someone for this long, right? Mm-hmm. We know this shit's going to go dead. So if you can't identify what red flags you see during the dating. So you're having unprotected sex if you're having sex with someone for over a year. So you're, you're doing all of this. You're doing your, you're, you're showing them around your friends, your family. If you know that this is something that can't be tangible, I can't respect that. You should have went all the way and let that shit fail in the marriage. I don't think so. I think it's a waste, but I think that's a waste, bigger waste, but I don't necessarily think if you, I understand like it does feel like a waste of time because you literally cannot get it back. If you date someone for eight years and it it doesn't go nowhere and you guys break up. But the reason I feel like it's not a complete waste of time is because every single person I've ever talked to, dated, whatever, I used to feel like, holy fuck, this was just a waste of time, whatever it was. But you know what I realized is it wasn't really a waste of time. I really figured out what I do and don't like yeah. because I know a couple of girls around my age or who have only just started out in the dating scene or haven't even started at all because they don't want to give anyone a chance. And I'm like, you guys are fucking stupid. You have no idea what you don't like. Like forget finding somebody that you do like, but you have absolutely no idea what you don't like. So how are you expecting to find someone? You know, at least if you know what you don't like, you know what to look for. And someone like in dating someone, it's like, fuck, 
they have this exact same trait that I didn't like from this person. Mm -hmm. I don't want that. And at the same time, it's like, I also, I've never been the kind of person to see time as a measure for how much you should love someone or, or how much further something should go because time, like the measure of time itself doesn't mean anything but the timing of things happening themselves mm -hmm. means something. So like you could go, you could date someone for a couple months and go through things that couples, norm, normal couples, quote unquote, uh, don't go through until two years into their relationship. So mm -hmm. I don't know. That's just kind of how I view it. I, I say, I say, Nina, you proved my point. You proved my point because you know why? You identified what you wanted and what you didn't want it because those guys that you were, were, were dating, did anything go over a year? Let's let's keep it no, 100. Nothing went over like three three months. Three, and exactly, months. you proved my point exactly. So we're able to identify certain yeah, things are... that we want and we don't want within a short period of time, right? Where anything that goes over us uh, that extended period of time. Now, if you believe in marriage, right? Now you're working towards something, right? Now we're going like, yeah. all right, let's strengthen the good bonds. Let's communicate. Let's iron out some of the things that are the the negotiables right you're able to go like all right we we're able to build on what the solid foundation that we've already identified so if you're able to go one year two year three year four year five year eight years and you can't get married man that okay whole, fine that whole shit's a dub and that's why i can say i can respect the failed marriage because you gave it a shot you gave it a shot but if you're with someone eight years, you waste your time if you believe in marriage. I'm talking to people who believe in marriage. If that is what you aspire to. So I have this, I have this small example that I wrote right here. So mm -hmm. imagine you worked at a law firm for eight plus years, right? Mm -hmm. You're trying to become partner in this law firm, right? And someone gives you the news saying that uh, you were unable to become partner of those eight plus years because you worked so hard. Would, not, would you not feel like your time was wasted as an associate with inside that law firm? Was it, was it not because you worked hard and someone else came out of nowhere and got the thing? It was like, did I waste my time? I worked my ad off, expiring to be a partner, doing everything necessary to be partner. You tell me I, now I can't be partner. I'm unable to be partner. I feel like my life is, my time here has been wasted. And that's the same thing that goes for relationships, man. To be honest, man, a lot of us are, 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 may not be financially stable, but goddamn, we could go to the city hall, write up a little paper, sign that little thing, and get married, and get married later. It's like fuck it, let's let's do the, let's do this. We could do the celebration. We could do all the flashy money thing later. So let's let's make that shit official right now, baby. Let's go. Do that. You could do that in three years. You might see someone told me you could you know who you could be with in three years, and that should be cool. That should be. Cool. I think the only thing that changes it is when it comes to moving in with someone. That is where things can change. But again, like if you're moving in after the eight year mark, like, and then you move in and you realize this is not someone, because when you spend 24 or seven with someone, it's different. Yeah. Like, that's why they always say, like, when you go on vacation with people and stuff, you know, like you really get to know them. And I think that's an important thing to do with yeah. a significant other, you know? Exactly. Um, but I think at the end of the day, a lot of this just comes back to open communication. Cause even for myself, when it was with those other guys, like the reason I would always just end it after three months is because if we're talking every single day for three months, we're seeing each other at least two times a week for three months, and you're telling me you don't know what you want, you're wasting my time. Because I'm, like, I'm... If, Imagine that eight years. Imagine you eight, so, five years but that's what I mean. You have to have open communication in the dating scene in general. Like, you need to be open with your partner and speak about those things. Like, especially now that we're older, like, a lot of people have this whole deadline of, like, I want to be married by 30. I want to have kids by 30, like all that kind of stuff. Like you need to talk about all this stuff. I think it's very important. And I think, yeah, like, I don't know. I've just always, I've always asked, like, is this going to relationship? You know what you want? All right, cool. Bye. And then I just move on to the next person. And I find someone, I did find someone, thank God, who was like serious about this shit and has an end goal of getting married and having kids. Like, cause not, not a lot of guys that I spoke to before, like it was always like i don't care about getting married i don't know if i want to get married and i was like man what the fuck i'm trying to get married not right now but i'm trying to find someone to get married to you know what i mean so to me it was a shock to find somebody who had the same values exactly 
And you know what? And we're going to end it right there, right? <laughs> we're going to end it right there. That's a positive note right there. We ended it on a positive note. Yes. Take, for, take leave from Nina. Take yes. leave from Nina. Don't, don't be like one of the other hoes out there that are with someone for eight plus years, 10 plus years, don't five plus years. Don't expect people to read your mind. Plain exactly. And, simple. and if you can't get a ring, oh my God, pussy trash. <laughs> pussy <Okay>. trash. <laughs> All right, but this has been another episode of the Educated Reckless Podcast. With your host, Apollo PN. No better, Nina. All right, make sure you check us out on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify for all your enjoyment needs. And we'll be back again next week, man. Peace out. Bye.